the buzzer by Reese. It's good! It's good! He did it again! Is it good? Let's see! It is good! Miles takes it to Gennaro Thomas. Jumper for the win! Go! He got it! Folks, and welcome to the Racer Report with head coach Steve Prom. Dave Winder here with you in the Gene Ray Center for Murray State Basketball. Uh, we're in our uh, first year of being here, and we thought we would tape our show in here today. This is where the racers do some practice work and also the Murray State women's team. Uh, but before we uh, get coaches' comment here on what happened last week with two wins, let's show you what's happening this week with the racers having the whole week open because of final exams at Murray State University. And then a week from Tuesday, the racers come back at home and play one of the region rivals, SIU, on the 17th at 7 o'clock at the CFSB Center. So coaches here, the racers scored two big wins at home this week against Evansville and then Saturday against Lipscomb. Uh, Coach, congratulations. Uh, those were much needed home wins, and you guys played great to get them. Yeah, I was excited to get home. You know, our schedule, mm -hmm. um, you know, you're always hard on yourself, but our schedule hasn't done us any favors being on the road uh, for, for basically four out of our five first division one games. We were able to get home, uh, play a good Evansville team who will win some games in the Missouri Valley. Difficult team to defend. And I thought we showed a lot of character and a lot of grit to come as bad as we played, as poorly as we played at St. Mary's, to fly back uh -huh. and have our two best days of practice. You know, it gave me a lot of hope going forward. And then we played well Wednesday night. Uh, couldn't make some free throws to make uh -huh. it a little easier. but. Uh, that's kind of par for the course right now and then came back and uh, had opportunities to extend the lead against Lipcomb, you know, kind of hung around mm -hmm. 8, 9, 10 and never could make that next shot to get it over the hump. Okay, but it was a good game. The racers uh, did what they had to do to win at the end of the game, which we're going to show you right now. Let's go ahead and roll the tape. Great to be back home, we mentioned. So we're going to start with the Saturday game and then, and then move back to the Evansville game on our next segment. Uh, but Coach, you, you talked about uh, the what you know pounding the ball inside against Lipscomb at the start I thought you hit them real good right off the bat you know our guys to their credit have done a really good job implementing the game plan early and what we want to do offensively you know we script our first three to five sets of the game kind of based on how we think people guard us and you know right there though that that's what we need to do more of. we need to have one to two passes one to two up the line up the lane excuse me and really look to attack more in transition but was proud of the way um, you know they were able to get the ball inside early, and then Lipscomb adjusted and went zone. All right, so they're early. Uh, you know, Payne already had five assists uh, five minutes into the game. Uh, Williams had five rebounds in the first four minutes, so the racers were very active. And when Moss knifed through the lane right there, it was 19 to 15. And then Coach, uh, there's a point here with 6:16 to go when Ford makes a jumper. Uh, you went up by 10. Uh, and then they cut it to three. We, and it's going to be a kind of a reoccurring theme as we go through these. Highlights. Yeah, I think that was the that was a big part of the game. I think it was 29-19. I don't know if that's exactly the score that what, where where you're talking about, but you know Ford makes this, and but we're up 29-19 and have opportunities to get it to 13. Miss, a, I think we went two or three empty possessions to get it to 12 mm -hmm. or 13. And again, I, I look at that and we really got to play a little faster, especially off misses. Okay, so that was uh, that last break at the half. Uh, Moss had a beautiful slam uh, to give the racers a 33-28 lead at the half. An hour into the second half, Payne gets into the lane. Chance for a three-point play, but he missed the free throw. And then you come right back and Moss hits the three from the corner. This was a 9-0 run for you uh, to go up by 11. Yeah, again, you know, it, it, it was the same song and dance all, all game long. But, you know, Jeffrey Moss has really stepped up the last two games. I had to, the guys each had to give me a word when we got back from St. Mary's of what they're, what, what a one word, you know, there's a book, John Gordon, one word that will change your life. And, you know, we kind of went off that uh, script, but his word was approach. And I think he's changed his approach. We need him to be good. If you look at his stats right now in conference play, I mean, excuse me, in our two home games, mm -hmm. you know, 17 points, four rebounds, you know, 47% from three, um, you know, four, only two turnovers, you know, four turnovers in two games. He's still got to get those lower, but a uh, terrific home stand for him. Well, then you saw the big guys. Farrell gets a hoop and a foul. Uh, Jarvis Williams and then Fields hit to three. The racer's up by 10 again. Uh, C.J. Ford came in and gave you some good minutes when uh, Payne picked up his fourth foul. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So now we're under three minutes to go. And, Coach, uh, your, your guys' last field goal was at 348, and you made 9 out of 14 to seal the game. 
Yeah, the uh, from the free throw line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yep. that, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we didn't make them late though. I think we missed where we go down the the last couple though. We we I think those were more of those five misses came in the last minute, but. You know, the guys, again, they did a good job. We wanted to isolate Jeff Moss on the wing. We did that. And the way the rule changes are, you really almost want to just drive the ball in late game situations and get to the free throw line. And, you know, but Jeff went up there and only made one yeah. or two. But, you know, we were fortunate to get out of there and be able to close the game. You know, we finished the game again, second time this year with six guys. Well, you see there, uh, you know, Payne fouled out uh, with 148 to go. And then Ford fouled out with 5.7 seconds left. You had to do a little uh, rearranging there, didn't you? Yeah, I wasn't sure which, uh, you know, we, we didn't have any more guards. So I thought, hey, Jeff Martin, you can put Jeff Martin in. Um, but I knew we probably wanted to get the ball in the Jeff Moss hands. He's my best inbounder. He'll always inbound the ball in a perfect scenario. But I went ahead and decided to go with Jonathan Farrell. Thought just his IQ and his ability to pass. I think he's a good passer. He's got some size. Put him in the game to take the ball out. And, wanted to get the ball into Jeff, and, and we were fortunate to do that. Yeah, well, you saw Lipscomb Sanderson hit the three. That made it a 67-60 game. Um, and then Rambo hit a one out of two uh, twice from the line. Uh, and then there was a part there where Sanderson got fouled on a three. He made two out of three. And then there with uh, 4.7 to go, uh, Fields hit uh, a, what I thought was a big free throw to put you up by three. At least if they would have hit something, it, it wouldn't have been a loss. It would have been going to overtime. Yeah, that was that was big, and um, you know our guys did a good job getting that that last uh, stop, so to speak. So, um, you know, right here, this is what we got to do a better job of. You know, CJ leaves his feet, fouls mm -hmm. the shooter. You can't foul three point shooter, uh, especially when you're up five. So then, uh, then we're going to see, uh, of course, a Ford fouled out there, and then we're going to see Fields uh, later on, uh, you know, hit a free throw to wrap it up. But coach. You guys were under the gun in this game, and I know free throws is a is a is a, a, a thing right now with the team. It's they're, they're trying to get better at them, uh, but you know the the game Wednesday and then against Lipscomb, yeah, you, know, you guys hung in there and made some plays when you had to. Yeah, and that's what you know. I told the guys after the game I was proud of them, but the way we've had to win, not being able to finish people off. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was uh, that was a good thing because we had to continue to execute. You can see right here of what we wanted to do right there. That's that's what we were looking to do. Uh, we wanted to continue to, to finish the game. And I love it, right Coach. Uh, game's over, and man, you're teaching all the <laughs> way back to the locker room uh, with with Jonathan Farrell there. So let's take a look at the final box as uh, the Racers uh, get the 73-69 win over Evansville. You can see some of the numbers there. The Racers uh, did a great job on uh, Lipscomb, uh, under 42% shooting. The Racers were about 42% as well. Uh, neither team shot the three that well. And uh, so, so there you go. It all comes up to a 73-69 uh, victory. And the Racers had six guys in double figures for the first time since 2009. And uh, on that particular occasion, that was uh, an OBC quarterfinal game in 2009. Aska, Miles, De Niro, Tony, Kevin Thomas, and Jeff McClain all had double figures on that day. So it's the first time it's happened uh, since 2009 that we had six guys in double figures. So that was a big win for the racers. Well, we're running on a tight schedule here today on the race report, so we're going to get a break real quick and come back and show you the highlights of the win over Evansville. We'll do that next. Like the thoroughbreds we are named for, racers are spirited and proud. We have the heart and will to succeed, to go farther, learn more, and embrace wisdom. We are champions who take our place in the Murray State tradition. We are racers. Enough of this golf already. I want you to go. I'm no. stupid. You're stupid. Boys, settle down. That Time Warner cable 
Any of these devices can be your TV at the click of a button. No one offers more sports on more devices than Time Warner Cable. Why do you got a laptop? I want the yeah. cell phone. Give me that laptop. Call 1-855-WANT-TWC and ask how you can save up to $600. Switch to a better entertainment experience, guaranteed. Time Warner Cable. Enjoy better. Roof Brothers, a Paducah tradition for 100 years. Roof Brothers, locally owned, family run. Roof Brothers, the best selection of beer, wine, and spirits found anywhere. Roof Brothers, service from selecting that special beverage for that special occasion to a keg party at the lake. Roof Brothers, two locations to serve you. Roof Brothers, proud supporters of Murray State Athletics. Back here on the Racer Report, Dave Winder and Steve Prohm on the Racer Report. So let's take a look at the Evansville highlights and roll those from Wednesday night. Big uh, time for the racers to get back home. They had returned late on Sunday from California. Man, everybody was beat up. Well, you saw us from the show last week. We looked awful, but uh, uh, there's Bryce Weiler, our friend who's uh, been blind from birth. He sang the national anthem, Coach. I, I, I thought that was a great moment. Yeah, it was. Bryce has uh, got a great passion for basketball, and he reached out to us last year before uh, we went up to Evansville. If he could come speak to the team, he did a really good job. And, you know, we've stayed in touch since, and he, he loves to sing and uh, and got an opportunity to combine both and came down here. Uh, and, Loves Evansville, you know, so he was uh -huh. rooting for Evansville. Yeah. <laughs> got an opportunity to sing the anthem and uh, did a great job. Well, I'm proud to call Bryce a friend of the Racers program, uh, no doubt. Great to see him again. Well, this was a tough team you were playing. Uh, out of the Missouri Valley, Evansville's got a good club. Uh, Miscavigus, the big guy in the middle, is a great player. Ballantyne came in averaging 25 points a game, top five in the country. Uh, but you got off to a good start. You're up 16 to 5. Yeah, we did. We got off to a good start. Uh, we defended. We played with a purpose. I thought we competed better. Uh, you know, I thought we executed early. You know, and then I, I just thought we did a good job. They're a tough team to defend uh, because of with all their emotion. And I thought our guys came in for the first time all year with two great days of practice and then competed the right way. So that bucket there, uh, Moss to Rambo in the lead gave the racers the 16 to 5 lead. 13.08 to go in the first half. Uh, Fields hits the three. Uh, racers up by five, 19 to 14. This was a back and forth game. You finally uh, uh, scored the last bucket of the half to go up 30 to 26. Yeah, you know, you see right there, that's what we need Tyler to do, get on the glass. Uh, Jarvis early, you saw unselfish play, kicking it back out from the double team. And Again, you know, that was big right there. Uh, Cam, very good passer, great assist to turnover ratio right now as a, as a freshman point guard. Uh, and then Dexter, I think he's shooting the ball right now and, and well and giving us a good boost. Okay, so that sent the racers into the halftime locker room up by four. Uh, then at the start of the second half, Fields hits another three, his third of the game. And I love this uh, play here where Payne gets the block and Jarvis gets the slam. That was a good defensive play. It led to an easy basket. Well, I keep telling our guys, that, and we're not able to turn people over like I'd like uh, right now, especially maybe we'll be able to do a better job when TJ comes eligible next week. But uh, when you get stops and, and you get opportunities to get, you know, steals, you get an opportunity to get easy baskets. And, you know, they're going back against, you know, if, if you can run, even with the lips, maybe you don't have to play against their zone as much. And I thought we scored well and, and really pushed the ball in transition, got some early offense. So that Moss three was 12.39 to go. Racers up by six. Now at 9.24, Payne had his foot on the line, long jumper. That tied the game because you had fallen behind by two there. Yeah, and that's what I was proud of the guys. I told them, I said, man, this kind of gave us every scenario, you know, up, down, and then late we get down. Do we fold or do we execute? And I thought we did a great job of executing and finishing the game. Okay, so then uh, we're going to get to the point here. Amos hits the three there, racers up by four. Uh, then Farrell scores, or actually he lobs it down to Williams who scores. Racers up by one, 528 to go. And then again, the racers were down by two with 357 to go. Rambo hits a tough shot here, and tell you what, he's got a knack of making those. He does. <laughs> he, 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 he finishes well around the basket. We got to get him, you know, put him, you know, he's, he's in a tough situation right now. He's, play, he's really a three. He's playing some four because of our, our depth and our injuries right now. But 
uh, he can. He can finish around the basket with drives. So twice there, the racers were down by two and really executed to get good shots. Payne scores here with 127 to go off the inbounds play. Now Murray State's up by two. It was tied again when Moss hit a three with 49 seconds to go. That seemed to be the, the shot there that got you through this game. Yeah, that was big. You know, they, they did a great job the last two possessions. You know, Cam got the one, you know, jumper on the little floater, and then Dexter made a really unselfish play, drive and kick to get, uh, to get uh, Moss a wide open three. And then, fortunately, uh, Coach's son's shot fell a little short, and we were able to get the win. Okay, so the Racers win at 65-63. You take a look at the box score. Uh, Murray State uh, shot 45% on the night and also uh, played Evansville even on the boards 32-32. Uh, uh, in Murray State, I think they had 10 turnovers in the first half and only had three in the second half. So a big win for the racers as they knocked off Evansville, Evansville by the score 65 to 63. So two big wins for the racers this week. Glad to, to see that. The racers are four and five now going into finals week. And a week from Tuesday, They'll host SIU in the next game uh, on the 17th at CFSB Center. So another break here coming up with Coach. We'll return here to the Ray Practice Center next on the Racer Report. Roof Brothers, a Paducah tradition for 100 years. Roof Brothers, locally owned, family run. Roof Brothers, the best selection of beer, wine, and spirits found anywhere. Roof Brothers service from selecting that special beverage for that special occasion to a keg party at the lake. Roof Brothers, two locations to serve you. Roof Brothers, proud supporters of Murray State Athletics. Enough of this golf already. I want you to go. Golf, golf is stupid. You're stupid. Boys, settle down. At Time Warner Cable, any of these devices can be your TV at the click of a button. No one offers more sports on more devices than Time Warner Cable. Why do you got a laptop? I want the yeah. cell phone. Give me that laptop. Call 1-855-WANT-TWC and ask how you can save up to $600. Switch to a better entertainment experience, guaranteed. Time Warner Cable. Enjoy better. I go because my friends are here. I go because it's so close. I go for the small class sizes. I go to get a better job. I go because I can take classes when it works for me. I go because I can transfer my credits. I go for some of Kentucky's most affordable tuition. I go because it's crazy not to. For all the right reasons. The Kentucky Community and Technical College System. Higher education begins here. Summer, let's hit the beach. Mom? You need a Pepsi. Ooh. Yeah. Let's have some fun. Ooh, all right. <laughs> Summer time is Pepsi time. You gotta work on that tan, bro. We're back here in the Racer Report with head coach Steve Prom, Dave Winder with you, and uh, let's take a look at the stats of the week. Two wins for the Racers against Evansville and Lipscomb, and you can take a look at some of the numbers there. Uh, the Racers were 341 in three-point percentage this week, and they had 10 for a season high against Evansville. The free throw uh, shooting still needs some work, as Coach Coach would say. The Racers 31 out of 57, 54 uh, percent. But Coach, there uh, the, the rebounds were good. You won the week 73-68. You had 26 offensive rebounds in two games. Yeah, you know Jarvis has been terrific on the offensive glass, and I think I saw this morning six in the country mm -hmm. and rebounding right now. So uh, we we just. He's at such a high clip the last two games, 14 and a half rebounds a game. So we need some other guys to get on the glass as well. But uh, proud of Jarvis' effort on the glass. Yep, and you see uh, some of the individuals there. Williams did average uh, 14 and a half for the two games. And Moss was 8 out of 17, uh, almost 50% uh, from three-point range. So it was a big week for the racers. Uh, and you had one player come off the bench Saturday night, C.J. Ford, when Payne picked up his fourth foul. I think it was around the 15-minute mark. And CJ played about 10 minutes for you and did a great job. 11 points and a career high seven rebounds. Yeah, you know, as I'm most proud, he made big yeah. free throws down the stretch. Uh, he rebounded the basketball and he made a couple big pull up jump shots. And the thing CJ has to do is when he's in the game, you know, just play with a swagger and have a great confidence about himself. And 
You know, he, he, he's not a, a prolific three-point shooter, but he can make 15, 17-foot pull-up jump shots. So, you know, I, I don't say much to these guys offensively if they're playing aggressive and playing smart. So. Mm -hmm. He needs, to, he needs to do that, but he had to finish the game for us, and I was proud of the way he finished. All right, so the Racers get two wins this week. We'll hear from C.J. and also Jonathan Farrell as we take a break here on the Racer Report with head coach Steve Prohm. Enough of this golf already. I want you to go. Golf You're stupid. You're stupid. Boys, settle down. At Time Warner Cable, any of these devices can be your TV at the click of a button. No one offers more sports on more devices than Time Warner Cable. Why do you got a laptop? I want the yeah. cell phone. Give me that laptop. Call 1-855-WANT-TWC and ask how you can save up to $600. Switch to a better entertainment experience, guaranteed. Time Warner Cable. Enjoy better. Roof Brothers, a Paducah tradition for 100 years. Roof Brothers, locally owned, family run. Roof Brothers, the best selection of beer, wine, and spirits found anywhere. Roof Brothers, service from selecting that special beverage for that special occasion to a keg party at the lake. Roof Brothers, two locations to serve you. Roof Brothers, proud supporters of Murray State Athletics. Back here on the Racer Report with head coach Steve Prohm. Big win for the Racers on Saturday night against Evansville, 73-69. And that now brings us to uh, finals week. Uh, the, the, all the guys taking tests this week and then getting ready for the December 17th game against SIU Edwardsville. After the game on Saturday night, C.J. Ford and Jonathan Farrell talked about the 10 days as they take tests and hopefully get better at practice. At home, and, you know, we're, we're playing our home crowd and we got 10 days off. You know, we're going to keep working every day, and we're going to treat it just like a, like a regular, regular game in three or four days. Because so. I know we're, we're all going to stay in the gym. Everybody's going to stay in the gym during this break, and we're going to have some, some good practices, some good workouts. So I don't think it's necessarily going to hurt the momentum. Uh, these 10 days, we're going to continue to get our defense better, get our defensive positioning better, and um, pretty much just working on our sets making sure we got everything down, and then we're going to start working on our next opponent. I love it when we see our student athletes talking about uh, going to practice and working and getting better, but you could just see it in CJ and Jonathan's eyes. They, they want to get better, and when you have that, you could have something special, Coach. Well, it's, that's what I said all along. Um, you know, I kick myself about scheduling. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you know, and that, I probably put our uh, guys in a you know, unfair advantage at times with so many new guys and then our injury bug that hit us. Yep. Uh, so it was good to get home and get some confidence that these guys can see some rewards uh, for some of their hard work. But, um, you know, leading up to the Evansville game, like I told them, it was our best two days of practice and preparation. I, I didn't know if we'd win, but I felt really good going into the game as a head coach. You know, uh, you know I watched really closely in the St. Mary's game. I didn't see guys down in a stance as much as I saw them Wednesday night. Would you agree? Well, we we regarded a lot better mm -hmm. um, the last two games. Uh, I, you know, at St. Mary's, you know, sometimes you just have those games. I don't really have an explanation yeah. outside of they're really good. Yeah, they're really good. Um, yeah, you know, and they and they dominated us, but uh, we didn't have a we didn't play with a passion that we needed to, and um, you know we got to do that. And and we, we you know I keep these guys out here probably too long right now because. Uh, our, our bodies are so thin, mm -hmm. you know, but 
I need to try to start bringing that down. But this is a great opportunity over the next couple weeks to get better. That's right. The Racers have 10 days between games, uh, December 17th, as they face SIU at the CFSP Center. But very important week, too. Uh, they are student athletes, and finals are coming up this week. All right, we got another break here with Coach Steve Prohm. We'll come back in just a moment. I go because my friends are here. I go because it's so close. I go for the small class sizes. I go to get a better job. I go because I can take classes when it works for me. I go because I can transfer my credits. I go for some of Kentucky's most affordable tuition. I go because it's crazy not to. For all the right reasons, the Kentucky Community and Technical College System. Higher education begins here. Hey, ladies. Ah. Enjoying the film? Of course not. Because this is our movie! And Dr. Pepper 10 is our soda. It's only 10 manly calories, but with all 23 flavors of Dr. Pepper. It's what guys want, like this. Catchphrase. So you can keep the romantic comedies and lady drinks. We're good. Dr. Pepper 10, it's not for women. <laughs> 10 seconds to go. in top of the key. Six seconds to go to three. There's enough of this golf already. I want you to go. Golf no. stupid. You're stupid. Boys, settle down. At Time Warner Cable, any of these devices can be your TV at the click of a button. No one offers more sports on more devices than Time Warner Cable. Why do you got a laptop? I want the yeah. cell phone. Give me that laptop. Call 1-855-WANT-TWC and ask how you can save up to $600. Switch to a better entertainment experience, guaranteed. Time Warner Cable. Enjoy better. Hi folks, back here to wrap it up with Steve Prohm on the Racer Report. And let's take a look at the schedule because uh, a lot of big games coming up, but we'll have to wait a little bit to get to that. You know, the Racers play at home a week from Tuesday against SIU. And you can also see the, the TV information there, too. A couple of those games uh, coming up, uh, getting us to the OVC opener on the OVC Digital Network. That's online. When the Racers go to Western Kentucky, we'll be on Racer TV and ESPN3. And then the game at Dayton on the 29th is on Fox Sports Ohio. Uh, so, Coach, uh, you know, take a look at that schedule. The next game is uh, is a ways off. Uh, it's a big week for the guys because uh, final exams. I remember it. You remember it too. It's it's kind of a tough week. It is. <laughs> it's a tough week. Not too tough though. Those guys, <laughs> you know, our academic guys, do a great job. But you know, today was we're taping the show today Sunday. We're off today because mm -hmm. we're still under the NCAA guidelines. Right. Um, because school's still in session. So, but we'll get back to work tomorrow. Uh, the good thing is I'll be able to get out this week and recruit a little bit, mm -hmm. and we'll be able to mix and match our practice this week with individual workouts and regular practice, and then. Uh, by Sunday and Monday, we'll, we'll start honing in on Southern Illinois. And, um, and I really encourage people to come out, though, next Tuesday for that Southern Illinois game right. and, and get out and, and support. I know the weather was bad, and, uh, you know, but let, let, let's get in here and get a great crowd, man, and get, get that atmosphere like we've seen it before in there. It's a big, it's a big rivalry. Uh, you know, the two schools, uh, Carbondale and Murray, very close together. It's always been a great game, and it'll be great to see the Racers take on the Saluki. So we got to go now, Coach. Thanks for stopping by. Good luck this week. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate all of you guys that came out this past week. Okay. Head Coach Steve Prohm, this is Dave Winder. We'll see you next time on the Racer Report. And as we leave you today, here's the voice of the racers, Neil Bradley. He had a good week, too. Numbers are going to run it up the court anyway. Payne drives underneath, throws up the prayer floater, and it goes in. Now back to Payne at the top of the key. Payne looks left, finds Moss. The wing three is gone. Jeffrey Moss puts the Racers up 53 to 49. Lobs to the top to Williams, now to the near side Payne. Not a really good screen set there by Williams. Payne inside the free throw line, double pump runner, rattles in, and he drew the foul. Now Moore drives in the lane. He has a shot blocked by Farrell. Two on two, Moss drives in, past the defender, put it off the glass and in for a Regions Bank Bank shot.
Steps through two defenders, open for that 12-footer, doesn't get it to go. Farrell in jail with three guys around him, put it up and in for a region's big, big shot, and he drew the foul. That's the muscle point game if he can hit this one, but he doesn't, and Ford, who just picked up his third foul, gets the rebound, rifles it to Moss, who slammed it in for a Duncan 